Hello, people of the internet. Welcome to another installment of Kaiju's Corner. I am your host, Andres Perez, aka Kaiju Noir, and here, back from the back to the show, it is my good friend, Deadpool Zilla. Hello, everyone. We're gonna talk about some giant fucking monkeys. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. They are actually gorillas, my good friend. Whatever. They're big and hairy. <laughs> So, uh, as Deadpoolzilla said, we are actually going to be talking about the most famous, most popular of giant quote-unquote monkeys. That's right, it's Conga himself. So, are you ready for a big old Conga retrospective, my friend? Uh, Andreas. Yeah? It's, it, I, I don't mean to burst your bubble, but it's, it's not Conga. Oh, right, right, it's, it's Ape. That, that was, we're, today, this week is the Ape retrospective. Andreas. What? Andreas. What? It's, it's not ape. It's not ape. Not ape? Then... Wait, if it's not Kong, if it's not ape... Oh, right, right. Queen Kong. I fucking hate you. <laughs> well, I, I, obviously, I don't know who else you're talking about. I mean, these are some of the most original giant monsters movies of all time. I mean, I don't see where, how could they, where could they possibly have originated from. All joking. No. Yeah. <laughs> I was, uh, I was wondering how long we could drag this joke out. <laughs> <laughs> All joking aside, we are actually going to be doing a little retrospective on the King Kong franchise in celebration of the recently revealed uh, trailer for Kong Skull Island, the um, newest interpretation of the classic legendary film that has inspired numerous people for... Um, for like for almost it's it's not quite 100 years but about i want to say 70 80 years i want to say a, a little uh, more because that close was close to 90 yeah, close to 90 i'd say yeah very close to 90 i think like in 2023 it will be 90 years old so we still got about three about six more years for it to turn 90. But yeah, so for, so for over 80 years, the original King Kong has inspired numerous people, has um, entertained numerous generations, and has led to numerous uh, interpretations of the same character. So in um, so Deadpoolzilla approached me with the idea of making a Kaiju's Corner episode just uh, talking about the history of the King Kong films. Uh, not so much the television version, the television incarnations, uh, nor the uh, or the animated uh, projects because we don't have a lot of experience on that and what experience we do have we don't really want to be reminded of that of that see uh, what was it Kong King of the Apes so uh, let's get started then so what movie are we talking about first Deadpoolzilla we're going to be talking about firstly the movie that started it all and I think it doesn't need a lot of introduction. The yeah. original 33 film. Absolutely. So, how did you first see... Uh, wh how did you first come across King Kong 33? About the same way I came across all of the stuff I watch. <laughs> um, I see something else before I see the original version. I shit you not, real quick. I shit you not. I, <laughs> I actually saw the Simpsons musical take on Planet of the Apes before I actually saw the actual um, Charlton Heston film. <laughs> Charlton Heston. Charlton Heston. Yeah, the you the original '70s Planet of the Apes film. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I thought I was, like, I was talking like you know. I was like, wait, you know, how do we switch over to how do we switch over to Planet of the Apes? Let me explain. Um, I was the reason I bring that up and why I say that I saw the Simpsons mute little scene in that in oh that yeah Doctor Zayas yeah. I, the first Kong film I ever watched was the 76 film, and it wasn't until I was 14 or 15 uh -huh. that I finally saw the 33 film. Mm, I see. Were you ever aware of the 33 film, or were you aware of the fact that there was an older black and white version? Oh, no, I was aware of it. I just, it just never, for some fucking reason, it never came on as much. But then again, I had cable back then, and, and then I got the wondrous show of TCM. <laughs> now I can watch it, like, almost once every month. Right, okay, that sounds really cool. Uh, the way that I came across it, I was actually a lot more younger than you when I first saw uh, Kong 33, where it was on television, probably something along the lines of a Turner Classic-esque movie channel, because, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Turner Classic Movies because it was the same channel that I would watch every Halloween for, like, black and white monster movies, like The Crawling, the Crawling Eye and Gamera the Invincible. So, uh... 
I was able to watch it, and my parents actually recorded it on VHS. You know, this was back in the day, children, where you could actually record your move, record your favorite movies and TV shows on a thing called a video cassette. And so I would watch that VHS recording um, over and over and over again. And uh, funny enough, there are points where I would misinterpret the story because I watched the scenes out of order. I would actually, like, skip to the very end of the movie, and then I would, like, rewind it. Or actually, my father would rewind it and send it to the back, uh, to the very beginning of the movie. And so I would be like, wait a minute, this doesn't, the story doesn't really make sense. They went back and got another Kong to, to, to kill off the Empire State <laughs> Building. But, uh, of course, that was just me being young and stupid back then. So, uh... I think maybe I got into King Kong possibly before Godzilla because um, before I got into Godzilla, uh, as I mentioned years ago in my Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster review, I was heavily into dinosaurs before uh, I got into Godzilla. And so I think King Kong uh, helped influence my love of dinosaurs, which then led to my discovery of Godzilla. And, uh, huh. yeah... So, how do you feel about Godzilla? I mean, Godzilla. How do you feel about Kong Thirty Three nowadays? Um, I I still think it deserves the credit that it's one of the one of the films that you. It's essential for moviegoers to see if you consider yourself a film buff, not just as a kaiju fan, but as a film buff in general. You need to watch this film. Mm-hmm. And do you think? It's possible for younger generations, uh, younger audiences, to still appreciate this movie, feel, still find this movie entertaining. I would. I don't know if I could speak for everyone, but I think there is a major entertainment value for this film because this did so much for the film industry, special effects wise. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they were doing scenes that you'd think, like, oh, um, of course, Ray Harryhausen perfected those such kind of cinematography scenes, but Willis O'Brien and his team. They had to think outside the fucking box for the for some of this shit. Oh yeah, yeah. These guys were uh, Will O'Brien and his team were true innovators here. Yeah, um, it's uh, it's a testament to their work and the creature designs. And it's kind of funny because um, I was Godzilla fan first. Kong, f- I didn't meet, I didn't find Kong until a little later in my life. But mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> And there's actually, because when we get to, I guess, King Kong versus Godzilla, I've got an interesting story to go behind my first experience with that film. Hmm, okay. But, um, but yeah, with Kong, it, um, when I first saw the 33 film, I was like, wow, this is amazing. Um, uh, just the, the scenery, the, um, the, the creature effects. I think the stop motion for Willis O'Brien holds up, but what do you expect? It's Willis frickin' O'Brien. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> There's always a lot of oh, like, sorry, but... um, a lot of savagery in his care in his mo- an- creatures um, movements. A lot of uh, he really does. I feel like he captured a lot of that animalistic behavior while still showing a lot of humanistic qualities with Kong himself. Yeah, I feel like the like um, the only person who could top him um, st- uh, stop motion wise was his, was his student. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, definitely. Uh, you know, I want nowadays. I wonder who is like the new like. If, I wonder if there even is a modern day Ray Harryhausen, like someone like the next Ray Harryhausen in terms of stop motion animation, because we have several stop motion um, projects nowadays, uh, especially the movies, especially with movies like uh, Kubo, the two of the two strings, or Coraline, or like Frank and Weenie, you know the usual that the usual like horror themed uh, stop motion stuff. But I wonder if there's any if like if in the animation industry there's an actual like big name stop motion animator nowadays. Uh, I I would have to say no on that, but that's a totally different topic we could talk about another time. Sure, sure. Um, so let's see. I guess to um, move on uh, to the sequel, the sequel that came out the very next year with Son of Kong. Uh, unless you wanna, you had anything else you wanted to say about the first film? Other than, if you haven't seen it, what the fuck's wrong with you? Oh yeah, it's definitely, like, if you're a giant monster fan, totally, um, uh, totally go check it out. Um, this is definitely a movie that's, like, everyone, I feel like any film buff, any monster movie fan, any, uh, King Kong fan, any Godzilla fan, any, any, like, horror movie fan, this is, like, an essential movie you need to have in your collection, I believe. Uh, so, I guess moving on to the sequel, 
uh, how did you first come across Son of Kong? Uh, by accident. I was actually, uh, my mother used to, um, was a, is a teacher, and in my younger years, I'd stay in her classroom as we waited to go home. And her, cha- I don't know how, I guess it was on AMC, I can't remember, but I was just flipping through channels in her, in her classroom, <laughs> and came across Son of Kong, which I didn't even know was a thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I was very confused. <laughs> mm, I see. And um, did you, and w- I guess at that point, did you see the movie in full at that point, or did you later, like, sometime late like did you actually saw the, the whole movie sometime later oh i saw the whole well i missed about 10 minutes of the film but i got the gist of it mm-hmm. i see i think i may have seen son of kong around the same time no actually probably this was it was definitely in elementary school and I had already gotten into Godzilla by this point. So this was past 1996, I believe. And once again, it was Turner Classic Movies that featured Son of Kong. And like you, yeah, I was very surprised that something like that existed because everyone talks about King Kong, but not many people, if any, really talk about Son of Kong unless you are some a giant monster fan who's specifically talking about the series like what we're doing right now. And... Uh, <laughs> w- do you, many people believe that the that Son of Kong is significantly inferior to the first movie. Do you think so? I would have to say yes. We, um, I would have to agree with that. Now, I don't hate Son of, Son of Kong. Uh huh. Um, but but I will admit that I feel like this time around, Willis O'Brien and his stop motion team was a little more. I feel like because apparent what I hear is that the budget was a lot smaller. Mm-hmm. This film. So the the stop motion was a little more like jerky, and I, it just felt really strange. And it all like the the only actor I feel like is giving a shit is um, Carl Denham's character, which I will say that I don't know <laughs> I don't know if these are fighting wor- words, but I feel like Carl Denham in the original two movies is a lot more like with with that version of with the original Carl Denham, he was more like a man's man and yeah he 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 was more he wasn't really concerned at first of catching kong he mm-hmm. was more along the lines of i want to get a picture and save ann but if we can't get the picture or save ann i want the monkey that's 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 yeah, my yeah. last thought he was kind of someone who like took note he didn't take shit from anyone and he did what he wanted to do and this movie made him into a much more humble and sympathetic character and if anything i feel like that's the best quality of this movie is that it does feel more like Carl Denham's redemption story. Yeah. Yeah. And as someone who's always been a fan who always loved the original story, I've always liked uh, certain, I always liked it when some certain writers take um, the original Kong mythos and kind of show what exactly happens after the empire state building incident. Uh, we had a little bit of that with the uh, King Kong, what was it, Kong, King of Skull Island book, uh, com- book both the uh, the novel and the comic. And uh, and here, it's really interesting to see how the, the I guess, the uh, financial impact of the Kong incident on, and how much it weighs, how much that burden weighs on Carl Denham himself. Well, and that's another thing, is that you don't see that a lot in sequel kaiju movies that, oh, we're, you know... We have to pay. You have to pay for this, this, and this, or you know, it's really yeah, showing yeah. the. You never really see like the economic effect or uh, of a giant, uh, or rather the economic uh, aftermath of a giant monster uh, incident, especially one you brought here. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the closest thing I, I can think of off the top of my head was it was Godzilla vs. Biollante, where it shows you like what happened mere moments after the finale to Godzilla '84. And the after, like the psychological after effects of uh, like uh, building up to Godzilla's return in that film. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. And let's see. So, uh, funny enough, with King Kong, we talked a lot about the special effects and the monster, the monsters themselves. For here, for this one, this probably has the most forgettable monsters, perhaps, uh, perhaps because. How do you feel about Coco, the titular son of Kong? Uh, to say he's like a furry minya <laughs> seems cruel. <laughs> Although that would be a little apt because he is a very childish character and very, and obvious and he's obviously he's played up for laughs to the point where he's even like like shr- it's almost like he's like looking at the camera and shrugging his shoulders. 
Like, like, you can almost see Abbott and Costello in this film. Yeah, you know what? I'm surprised they never made an Abbott and Costello met King, meet King Kong. Yeah, that would have made million. That would have made a shit ton of money. Yeah, yeah. Imagine if like, Adam- if, like, Ray Harryhausen, like, made, like, a sequel to Mighty Joe Young and and looking seeing as how like Mighty Joe Young interacted a lot with uh human characters because he was a smaller character a smaller uh monster imagine like Abbott and Costello mean Mighty Joe Young with something like on that level of production yeah that would actually a lot of fun yeah yeah somebody should make that movie like someone like you know how they made like a three stooges movie like a year or two ago they they someone someone should make like a new Abbott and Costello movie <laughs> And they can yeah. have, they, you can have like Abbott, and, uh, like Abbott and Costello, Costello and, uh, impersonators. They are playing Abbott and Costello type characters because you know they're always playing different characters in every movie. And so imagine they're like two jungle explorers in the 1950s, like make it a period piece, and they're searching for the 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 jungle for a new attraction for their bot for their for their circus, and they come across like Kong or Coco or or fucking. Uh, Mighty Joe Young or Conga, for that matter. <laughs> um, yeah, but getting back, like getting back to this film, right. um, the yeah, the monsters, the uh, they don't look like dinosaurs. I'm like, when did we go to Eternia? <laughs> it's like we had a bear, and we had a, a sea serpent. A sea serpent, yeah. Did we have like a, um, a, a rhino or a triceratops? I can't remember, but I remember like this cert, like this demon like dragon thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks just like the demon the, like the demon dragon you would see at the end of uh the what was it, the seventh voyage of Sinbad. Yeah. The, the Cyclops <clears throat> fought. It's yeah. like that's not a dinosaur at all whatsoever. <laughs> and I guess <laughs> When did you guys infest Skull Island? Yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking maybe the reason why these mon- they chose these monsters was perhaps maybe because they knew that they were dealing with a smaller uh, animal, like a smaller Kong, so they were looking for smaller creatures for Kong to fight, perhaps. Yeah, if that's the case, why not just get, like, a younger T-Rex or something, if that's the... Uh, I don't know, it's... It, uh, who knows? Maybe there is an explanation, but we're just too stupid or too lazy to to research that, but uh, overall, yeah. the, uh, the, the level of spectacle on screen, it's... Is greatly diminished. Indeed, yeah. So, uh, would you recommend people to see Son of Kong? For novelty's sake, at least once, if you're interested. Mm-hmm. So this isn't really, like, a movie that you've got to see, nor is it really... It's not important. It's not, like, important, nor is it essential viewing for a be it monster fan or a non-monster fan, but uh, it does have enough points to be... It's it's not. It's got enough decent points for it to not to be... A, a decent and entertaining time. So, yeah, it's worth a view, I would say. Not so much essential owning. So, moving on, we actually have Kong's first colored appearance, as well as Godzilla's first colored appearance, with King Kong vs. Godzilla, the third entry in both characters' franchises. And so, how did you come across King Kong vs. Godzilla? Well, um, I found a library... Uh, back in my elementary school, of this, uh, like this movie, little movie book that had like collected all these books, and I was like, King Kong versus Godzilla, that's a real thing. Oh my god! Yeah, and like the, you had the same reaction as the kid from Troll Two. Yeah, kind of. Oh and my god! Years, <laughs> and for years, I tried finding it in like VHS stores and stuff like that, but I could never find it. I'm, a, I'm, well, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an imagining Deadpool Zilla with a, like I'm imagining just no no not you but your Deadpool Zilla character with the Indiana Jones hat and the web going into like the <laughs> dark the dark dirty the dark uh, dirty caverns of of the VHS stores. Yeah. Um, well, here's where it gets a little more morbid. Mm-hmm. Um, now, keep in mind that my search had kind of all but given up, but. Um, what had happened during this time is that I had gotten a horrible hernia that, like, I needed surgery to fix this. Keep in mind, I'm about 9 or 10 at this point. Jesus, what were you doing to get a hernia like that? I don't know. I can't remember. Seems like there's Um, always something wrong with your body, isn't it? Well, (laughs) as I was, like, about to say with Godzilla and how I got connected to him is because I had a blood clot in my heart at 2 years old, and the only reason... 
they needed to take an x-ray, so my parents kept me up by making me watch Godzilla films. So you could say Godzilla saved my life. There you go. Jesus. Quite a trooper <laughs> here, folks. I honestly mean that. <laughs> um, but getting back to the subject at hand, I the cernia, and the, the, day, the night before the surgery, uh-huh. uh, my, great, my uh, grandparents, my great-grandmother included, scoured to find this film. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, I found the English version. They found the English, well, obviously, it's the English yeah. version. And it was the of 90s, the VHS. right? Yeah, it was the 90s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's no hopes of finding a Japanese version in America. <laughs> yeah. Um, they had found the King Kong vs. Godzilla VHS, mm-hmm. and I spent the, the night watching it before, you know, sli- getting sliced open and shit happening. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, now, in my youthful years, before I found the DVD of King Kong vs. Godzilla, I always held it in this film of, yeah, it was pretty good. And then I watch it. Now, it's not bad, but it's not a, what I would call, well, it, I will say that King Kong vs. Godzilla really just kind of sparked my imagination of why I'm on YouTube, I'm kind of known as the crossover guy. You uh-huh. could thank that movie for doing that. Oh, I see. So this was the movie that inspired your love or sparked your love of crossovers? Yep. Oh, I see. And uh, so at this point, you were already aware of both characters. And Yeah, I was, aware, I was aware of both characters, yeah. So was this the very first crossover you've ever witnessed? Yeah, this at the time, it was the very first. I had not seen, you know, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman or mm-hmm. obviously Freddy versus Jason hadn't come out yet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Now, did you ever watch the, any Power Ranger crossovers, like between seasons, or even the Ninja Turtle Power Ranger crossover before then? Uh, I didn't see that until, like, reruns after. Well, maybe I did see them, and I'm just getting mi- mixed up in my head, but bottom mm-hmm. line, this is the first crossover. All right, yeah, and it was definitely the the most impactful. If, if, if it wasn't the first one, it was at least the most impactful one. Yeah. Okay. And nowadays, where does it rank on your on, on your list of favorite crossovers? Because I know you don't your opinion of this film has lowered over time. Um, I guess for film, because I guess if you want to go by crossovers by film or comic, I would say film wise. Uh, well, we have so many uh, so little film crossovers. Mm-hmm. I would say maybe six or so. Well, maybe started off at ten or nine. Mm hmm. OK, uh, I guess. So for me, the way I came across this movie was um, I believe it was a collect. I had this v- old VHS. Maybe some of you in the audience knows what this is. This was an old VHS called Hollywood Dinosaurs. And it was a sort of like a 30 minute, maybe less than that, uh, a 30 minute or half hour documentary on the history of dinosaurs in cinema and a good portion of the movie. Uh, they covered the Showa era of Godzilla films, and so within that, uh, with the, actually no no actually well, they do show the the they have, they eventually they showed each movie through the movie's trailer. So they they whoever made this VHS documentary, um, this was obviously a kind of like a cheap cash in on the Jurassic Park craze because ev- at that point everyone was making uh, dinosaur related movies on direct video on VHS. And so this person just, whoever made this, they collected a lot of public domain, uh, at least at the time, public domain movie trailers. And they showed these movie trailers, and they would, there would be a narrator talking about each movie as the film went along. And so Kong was in there. But before, I just remembered before that, I believe it was maybe my VHS of Godzilla King of the Monsters, the American cut of the first Godzilla film, at the end, this was the Scimitar release, and I think at the end of the Scimitar uh, VHS, there is a compilation of movie tra- of B-movie, mo- uh, mon- B- monster B-movie uh, trailers, including movies like um, Robot Monster, The Giant Claw, uh, Invaders from Mars, and one of those movies was King Kong vs. Godzilla. And so having seen, you know, the first Godzilla movie, uh, it was entertaining enough as it was. 
Although as a child, it wasn't one of my favorites because at that at that point, all I cared were monsters fighting, and obviously Godzilla 54 didn't feature multiple monsters. But at the very end of the VHS, I clearly remembered being very excited looking at um, witnessing the trailer for Godzilla vs. King Kong. And so I was like, holy shit, they were like, they're the two characters I know about. They're fighting. I kind of had the same little reaction to you where this was kind of like my first crossover, uh, first big crossover that I've ever seen. And so at that point, I decided, I, not at that point, but um, yeah, at that point, I, that movie always kept in, uh, stayed in my head. And I never had a t uh, an opportunity to watch it until the eventual, let's see. When did I see it, actually? I never owned a VHS copy of it. I never witnessed a VHS copy of it. So maybe the only time I watched it was in 2006, when, or 2006 or 2007. It was back, this was back when FYE stores were still a thing. Uh, do you remember FYE uh, for your entertainment? Oh, there's still a few here where I live. Um, there's one about 15, but it's going down the drain. The other... Like, I only know of two where I live. One's about an hour away from me. One's another, like, five minutes away. They are a dying race. Mm, yeah, yeah. All of them uh, are pretty much gone in, in San Diego. Uh, so it was in FYE. They had a lot of the uh, of the classic media, the uh, Toho Master Collection uh, editions of the classic media DVDs, those very nice ones that came out in celebration of Godzilla's, at the time, 50th anniversary. And I bought those videos along with the DVD two pack of King Kong um, versus Godzilla and King Kong Escapes. Uh, did you ever came across that? Uh, the the uh, DVD two pack of both Toho mm -hmm. Kongs. No, I haven't. No, I didn't. Yeah, no. Okay. Well, um, that's what how I was able to get both of my hands on both of those movies, and that's how when I saw I saw I was able to see that one as well. Unfortunately, the English ver I never in the Japanese version has never been released in America, and I am interested in seeing it at what um soon because I hear it's a very it's very different in tone because the American version tries to treat it more as a serious movie, while the Japanese version was just a straight up com uh comedy. So it's interesting how the American version tries to like cover it up and play it up as like a typical B movie at the really? time. I, I still don't get that from Siri. It never felt serious to me in the English version. Oh, really? Okay. Maybe it's just my bad memory, because it's been a while since I've seen it. Um, the last time I did see, I saw it. I knew that it, it, a lot of it feels very prototypey. Like, it's, it was very ambitious. And I feel like for the movies between, for the, like, for, what would you say? I guess for King Kong vs. Godzilla and Godzilla Raids Again. They felt they they were the first two movies to have multiple monsters fighting each other, and I feel like they were very uh, trying a, a lot of different experimental techniques uh, to the point where even like uh, Eiji Tsuburaya, he when they fucked up and accidentally made the Godzilla vs. Zangiris fight like uh, at high speed, they said eh, it looks interesting. Let's roll with it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> and obviously, you know, not, I guess not not a lot of people outside of Toho liked it, so they never did it again. And so here, I noticed they were using a lot of different techniques to make King Kong vs. Godzilla. They... It's also because it was the first um, in-color film for both monsters. So uh huh. So this was kind of like, hey, let's play around. Mm-hmm. Um, in f in, yeah, yeah. So like they were always switching. They, um, they some uh, like at far away distant shots, you can tell that they were not using suits, but they were using puppets. And of course, there's that infamous infamous shot of the stop motion uh, drop kick Godzilla drop kick sequence. Uh, and let's see. So I don't I don't think a lot of it works in comparison to later installments. I feel like with Mothra vs. Godzilla, that's when they started. Oh, I get, they started, uh, how would you say? Uh, started, a little rocky. Well, I, guess, I would say King Kong vs. Godzilla is rocky, but with Mothra vs. Godzilla, they found their groove, I think. They found something yeah. that they were comfortable with, and they said, and they, from there on, they, they took what finally worked and started building upon that. Uh, and, you know, build the, this all, King Kong vs. Godzilla, you could argue, built this Toho Kaiju universe. Oh, yeah. It was yeah. the stepping stone, yeah, at least. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because with Mothra vs. Godzilla, that was the film that like started say, that where they said, "Okay, we crossed over Godzilla with an American product. Let's start crossing over our own shit now." Uh, yeah, um, and that one's quintessentially Batman v Superman. If it was, do- it builds a universe. It has two he- monster. It has two iconic characters for a country fighting each other. God, it's like a bat. Uh, it's Batman v Superman, but done better. Funny enough. Um, Last year, the SOS and I, we collaborated on a video where we made a parody of the Bat- of the Batman v Superman trailer. Yeah, I, I saw that one. I saw it. Was, it, was, <laughs> it was great. Yeah. And uh, even, funny enough, they reminded me of a fan comic someone made where someone parodied uh, Bat- the ending of Batman v Superman but with Godzilla versus King Kong, where it's Godzilla, he's fighting King Kong, but King Kong is wearing the Mechani Kong armor. He's like, save <laughs> Mothra. Why did you say that name? Why do you know that name? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be hilarious if someone actually, like, tried to do some sort of homage to that outside of that comic. But, um, and also it's really funny because, like, in the, our fan trailer, we depicted Armored Kong as Jet Jaguar, of course. <laughs> for anyone who is aware of the German title to Godzilla vs. Megalon, King Kong and the Demons from Outer Space. <laughs> so, uh, I guess overall thoughts, would you recommend King Kong vs. Godzilla? It's polarizing for Godzilla fans, um, because there is some fun in there. Like, Despite all the flaws in that final fight between Godzilla and Kong on Mount Fuji, at the same time your brain's like, shut the fuck up, you'll like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, uh, and plus, you know, you've mm-hmm. got a character named Vegeta, who is a total bungling idiot. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> there's a lot of fun in this film, but I don't think, if you're looking for more serious, darker tone, Godzilla, not it. But keep in mind, this was Kong's first movie in since 33. Mm-hmm. Not counting Son Kong, because that was his son, not him, mm-hmm. obviously. Now, do you think this movie is faithful to Kong's character? Do like is this no. does this feel like Kong, or does this feel like another thing entirely? Well, it was supposed to be Frankenstein's monster. Um, Very true. Initially. Well, it's really funny. Like the product, I I keep hearing different reports where it's like they initially wanted to make Kong versus Frankenstein. Uh, Will O'Brien wanted to make Kong versus Frankenstein, and I guess someone passed along that idea to Toho, or maybe it was by coincidence. Toho wanted to make Kong. Uh, Frankenstein versus Godzilla, and then they eventually got the rights to Kong, and they said, "Okay, fuck it, let's just have Kong versus Godzilla." Then, yeah. Um, so, so it's interesting that at one point there were there was a Kong versus Frankenstein and a Godzilla versus Frankenstein in pre-production, and yet there was a Frankenstein Toho movie that had neither uh, have him fight neither Kong nor Godzilla. Right, right. It's like everyone wants to start shit with Frankenstein. He's like, hey, man, what did I do? <laughs> I'm only a freak of nature who's an abomination to God. He's like, yeah, get in line, pal. So are the rest of us. <laughs> you think you're so special? Fuck you. We're gonna, you're like, just for saying that, we're going to beat you up, you little pansy-ass little bitch. <laughs> oh, I don't nobody likes me. <laughs> All I ever wanted was to be loved. <laughs> and now we just painted uh, Frankenstein as like the saddest monster in the world, <laughs> which uh, which is funny. Uh, funny not as sad as Mogira. Not as sad as Mogira. True, Mogira. <laughs> He's like, I wish someone could hate me, then I'd get some attention at least, Mogira. <laughs> So, yeah, so, <laughs> to back to my original question, so I guess what you're telling me is you don't think that this is very faithful to Kong? But it's still, like, I still like it because it's a different Kong. Uh-huh. Um, the lightning thing makes no, like, makes, uh, it makes a show, <laughs> yeah, it was supposed to be a Frankenstein thing. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, well, Kong needs something to fight Godzilla. It's a freaking radioactive mo- lizard. He yeah, has yeah. to get it close. Yeah, I always loved, I, um... Despite the limitations of the suit of the suits, I did like how much personality the characters um, 
how much the suit actor is placed in their in into their roles. They really gave it their all. They gave their monsters a lot of personality, especially with Kong being more humanistic. I love the part where he the, his reaction to being bur singed by Godzilla's atomic breath for the first time, or just his utter like he's like he had this a look of utter um what would you say utter utter confusion. He's like, what what how the fuck am I supposed to go up against this? What? I've never come ac across anything like this before. What is Godzilla? Uh, <laughs> Meanwhile, Godzilla's just a complete bastard, and he's like, I don't give a shit. Fuck you. I'm going to destroy everything, because I'm a douchebag. <laughs> so, uh, and I don't, know about, I don't know about you, but I kind of like the head design for Godzilla in this film. Just yeah, side yeah. note. I always like that more like reptilian look to his face. Like it, Unlike m many Godzilla movies, which uh, many Godzilla designs where they try to give a more mammalian um, uh, aesthetic to his to his appearance, this one is very more far more reptilian. And do you ever get the feeling that they probably looked at this suit and they use it as inspiration when making the Millennium suit design? I was going to say Shin Gojira, actually. Really now? Because the whole the the teeth are all jutted out of the mouth, just like in Shin. Oh, okay, that is kind of true. Uh, one thing I like, I always liked how big the claws were on his hands. Yeah, that, I thought that was pretty cool. Like, again, it shows the more reptilian design. Yeah, yeah, it's a very bulky, um, muscular... Uh, version of Godzilla. It's almost like, I guess, the reason why many people tend, tend to see Godzilla, or maybe like a lot of people, actually, I think like King Kong vs. Godzilla was one of the more successful Godzilla films, and it's probably the one that most people have seen, and so maybe it's because of that that we tend to see American depictions of Godzilla get portrayed as more dinosaurian than mammalian, especially when it comes to the face. Like, you've seen, have you ever read Marvel's Godzilla? Yeah, I've I've read it. Okay, so you've seen how that version of Godzilla looks m far more like a dinosaur in term in like with the face, or even with the uh, Hanna Barbera version, they make him more like dragon like uh, with the face. Uh, so maybe it's like because of King Kong versus Godzilla, the one that most people have probably seen. Maybe that's why we get more reptilian stuff. That or it's just oh people see Godzilla as a dinosaur, so they just go with it. Maybe that's the more simplest, easy, easiest, and more simplest most likely uh, uh, scenario. But, uh, anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, I was just agreeing with you. Okay, cool. So, uh, overall, would you recommend King Kong vs. Godzilla? I would. Alright, awesome. And I would, too. Now, moving on ahead to the second and last of the two Toho Kongs, we have King Kong Escapes. Now, how did you come across this one? Uh, $5 DVD bin. Mmm, that's a lot cheaper than what I paid for at FYE. You'd be surprised at how low Walmart stoops to. That's how I found Godzilla vs. Biolanti. Really now? I think my Walmart was still selling that for like maybe 15 or 20 bucks. Well, here's the thing. When I found my edition of Godzilla vs. Biolanti, it was like a collection of like the giant Gila monster and... A few oh, other monster films. That one. It was the. It was like the fifteen movie or eight movie collection. Okay, I saw that one. Yeah, that's how I got Godzilla vs. Biolanti on DVD, and that's also how I got King Kong vs. Uh, King Kong Escapes because the, for some reason they thought, oh, Jurassic World's coming out. How to promote it? Giant monkey. Makes sense to me. <laughs> and I guess you could argue, well, Gorosaurus is in there, so. He has a dinosaur. You don't see it on the cover, but, you don't, but we swear he's in it. <laughs> now, uh, I did want to ask, um, let's see, with this movie, uh, what was he? Uh, do you think you'll ever get your hands on, like, a bootleg of the, of either film, either, the, uh, either Toho Kong movie? I don't know. Honestly, I get, tell you honestly, I don't know. Okay. Have you ever bought a bootleg before? Mm, well, <laughs> once and the qual. Well, technically, my copy of Godzilla vs. Megalon is is bootleg. Technically, mm. um, like a a good quality show of video bootleg. Well, here's the thing. The guy, when I was at this convent horror convention, the guy assured me, "No, this is the original Japanese uncut edition." 
and it turned out to be the English edition. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. I hope someone yeah, like, can, tra can track that bastard down. <laughs> well, here's the thing. It was a lot because I saw it at FYE for like $25. Mm -hmm. I got this for about 16 so <laughs> he mm. actually kind of helped. <laughs> hmm. Kong, so with Kong, I guess we could talk about the movie itself. King Kong Escapes is a, it's a movie. <laughs> <laughs> and what a movie it is. I would say it's a very imaginative movie. Now, I know it's based on, it's a, I think they wanted to make a Robinson Crusoe movie, but at that point, Toho got the rights to make uh, an adaptation. Uh, a part, they formed a partnership, I believe, with Rankin Bass. And from there, they made an adaptation of the Kong animated series. Oh, yeah, that thing. <laughs> and, that, like, how uh, was that one? It was like, King Kong, King Kong. Um, and I guess, like, they really ignored a lot of that movie's plot. Like, they have the villain and a robot version of Kong. But outside of that, everything else was different, I guess. Because this is coming from someone who never saw the animated series. I saw a few clips here and there, and I was like, no. That's kind of my sen sentiment as well. It's like, I have better um, things to do with my life. Things yeah. I'm not proud of, but still, a bunch of better things. <laughs> yeah, so King Kong Escapes, it's it's so weird because it's, it's such a... It's such a Jumble, it's such a jumbled mess of a film because it feels like um, in one case you have like, oh, it's going to be an island adventure type story. No, it's going to be a weird science fiction movie with a giant robot Kong. It, it, it's like it's trying to be two films at once at some points. But I feel like at that point it kind of gives it a lot of charm. Like, where it's like, this is clearly a product of the times where only in the 60s would you really get away with something this goofy and over the top. And I feel like a lot of entertainment value can come from that if that is, like, your... Th if you are entertained by that sort of thing. Yeah, it is. I mean, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that's it's it's such a... <laughs> You're right. It, it, this The 60s was the only time you could get away with that shit and still make it fun, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, I really love the uh, the actor who portrayed uh, Doctor Who, a insert whatever uh, Doctor Who joke you want to put in here, because Lord, <laughs> Lord knows that every single reviewer, every single person who's covered this has made a, doc a fucking Doctor Who joke. So, um, but I, I really like, enjoy the actor who played this. He's very over the top, very campy, uh, almost kind of f fits into like a... He's very... Uh, don't you think he's a little similar to like Cesar Romero's villain from... Or Cesar Romero's character from Latitude Zero? A little bit. And meanwhile, you've got, like, just like Latitude Zero, you've got, like, the main hero who doesn't re who looks far less interested in the movie than the villain is. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know this year at G-Fest, the actress who played... Uh, no, who played the main female lead, she was at... I'm very... I'm very... Uh, I, I'm very... I'm... Upset at myself for not remembering the character's name nor the actress, but uh, I didn't have a chance to meet her personally, but I did see her at G-Fest. And I can only imagine what she must be thinking now, where it's like, here's this movie that not many people know about, and then it's like, 50 years later, now people, like, rem oh, there's a good, large fan base for that movie. And I wonder, like, how long she's been aware of this. These would have been questions I wish I could have had the chance to ask her at this year's G-Fest, but... Uh, <laughs> you know, unfortunately, that's how life works. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there is, uh, you know, massive plot holes. But you could say that about the entire Showa era, really. Mm -hmm. um, Kong, uh, but yeah, Kong, Kong, King Kong Escapes, it's clear that it's a little, it's it's very much, it's a lot of fun. And it brings the whole mechanic, Mechanic Kong came before Mechagodzilla. Mm -hmm. Now, is Mechanic Kong the fan name, or is that the the name? Yeah, the name that fans came up with, or is that the official designation? Because I only ever came across that name through uh, through fan sites like Toho Kingdom or Wikizilla. I I want to say it's it's fan named um, because it's but it, I, it's clearly a pun, Mechanical Mechanic Kong. And that's something yeah. that really an, only an American would come up with that sort of name, I feel. Yeah. That level of stupid. 
Although, uh, funny enough, there was a uh, there's a version of the Godzilla theme song where part that actually has lyrics. It, they turn like the Godzilla theme into a J-pop song and with added lyrics. And part of the lyrics is just the the singers reciting the names of all the monsters, and they actually refer to Me- Mechanic Kong as Mechanic Kongu. So I guess that's the official name after all. I guess. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, so, just like I asked, much like I, uh, the last uh, move film, do you think is, is the, actually, no, here's a better question. Is this a more faithful interpretation of Kong? Is this a more faithful or le- less faithful interpretation? Uh, I wouldn't, I would say less faithful, but at the same time, it's a lot more fun. Um, it's clear that it's more science fiction element and, um, the Kong, the Toho Kong suit, much like the Gargantuas, gives the 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 suit actor a lot more to um, room to do more, uh, emote more uh, body wise. Mm-hmm. Uh, so which suit do you actually, or which does Kong design do you actually like of the two Toho Kongs? Uh, I'm gonna give it to the King Kong versus Godzilla one. Uh huh. I think probably because it's more it's more ape like, you know. Mm-hmm. I think I like the body of of Escapes Kong, but I like the face of to of King Kong versus Godzilla Kong, because I yeah. really don't like the dopey looking cartoonish eyes they placed on sixty on sixty six Kong. Yeah. Um. So uh, let's see. I think maybe in a way this, for whatever reason, I think this might feel a little bit may- possibly more closer to to Kong's, uh, to the original Kong mythos. I mean, you've still with like a uh, King Kong versus Godzilla, you still have the um, the concept of a big monster. He's worshipped by native islanders, and he's brought to civilization only to escape. Uh, it it does feel very Kong esque, and this one, you still have the island, but no, you have no natives, but you still have uh, Kong, who kind of forms a relationship with a woman, uh, with a female character he become that he becomes infatuated with. So in in some case, it so in some ways it ignores some aspects of the Kong mythos while adapting other uh, another as another aspect altogether. Yeah. Um, I could see that, but it's it it doesn't have the same kind of level of I don't, I, I don't know if grit's the right word of the first uh, film. Tone. Um, tone. There's the word. Okay. And uh, let's see. So as for recommendations, uh, what would you say about this film? Much like I said about Son of Kong, well, you have to be in the right. Mu- unlike Son of Kong, which is. Kind of just bad, no matter how you look at it. Uh huh. Um, this is like fun bad for me. Mm-hmm. That's for so me. you have to uh-huh. be in the right mindset for King Kong uh, for King Kong Escape. So I would say be in the right mindset, then watch it. Yeah, and would you say that about King Kong vs. Godzilla as well? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You, again, right mindset, watch it. Yeah, I guess that that's a good that would that would be a good summarization of my thoughts as well for both movies. But which one do you think is the better film? I'd say King Kong versus Godzilla because again, this was a big moment for both Godzilla and Kong, and mm-hmm. to have them for the first time, um, and you know, be the basis for you know what we're getting in twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess yeah, there's, there's a lot of entertainment from the novelty of seeing those characters together. Yeah, and in color, mm-hmm. and you know, this is you know Kong's big film since the th- since thirty three. Um, yeah, there was a lot going for it, and still there's a lot for it. You know, it was a film that it was the next generation's at that time's um, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Mm, okay, and what's funny enough, um, whenever I talk to, I bring up Godzilla to any of my students. Uh, they are my Japanese students. They they a lot of them seem to be unaware that King Kong and Godzilla actually crossed over. Like a lot of them know what Godzilla is. A lot of them know. Well, actually, a fewer fewer a good chunk of them know who King Kong is. But they're always surprised when I say, "Did you know that there was a movie with both of them together?" And they were like, "What?" So it's very <laughs> funny how, despite this being one of the more popular 
films in the series, it seems like Americans are more of more aware of Toho Kong than the Japanese people are. Then again, it seems like the Japanese people, the the younger, the newer generations, like when I mean newer, I mean the people like forty years and younger. A lot of them are unaware of like the past of Japan's, the history, or they're not aware of of the history, or they don't have a real interest in past Japanese entertainment. Unless it's like a legacy character that constantly gets rebooted, like Doraemon or Shinchan to a lesser extent, because I know Shinchan is like far, it's far、uh, less old or far younger than a character like Doraemon. Yeah. But,、um, anyways,、uh, moving on, we have Kong seventy six, which was the big Dino De Laurent,、uh, excuse me, Dino De Laurentiis. Um, headed adaptation, which attempted to remake the original Kong, but set in the modern era, and as a way of capitalizing on the big, scary monster,、uh, summer blockbuster monster movie craze that was、uh, kind of resurrected from by Steven Spielberg's Jaws film. So, as usual, how did you first see, saw this movie? Uh, this was the first Kong movie I saw. Actually, I remember I don't know how young I was, but I was sitting in my living room and, and my dad put it on and we watched it. <laughs>、mm. um, how old were you when you saw this movie? Again, like I said, I can't remember. Oh, okay.、Uh, where was it at? Do you know if it was at least in elementary school or kindergarten or pre before that? <sighs> Again, can't remember. <laughs> All right. Uh, for this one, I actually saw this very, very late because King Kong thirty three was always was my first Kong, and it was the one I saw the most. I wasn't even aware of a seventies remake of Kong until well into perhaps,、uh, perhaps maybe middle school or high school. I I just so happened to find it on TV, and I said, "Okay, the the TV guide says this is Kong, but this doesn't look like any Kong I am aware of." And at that point,、uh, my <laughs> I think my mother walked into the room and saw I was watching that, and she said, "Oh, okay, that's the Kong I grew up with." And I was like, "Oh, you had a Kong when you grew up, when you were growing up." And、um, funny enough, I actually had a friend named、uh, Jessica in high school, and she told me at one point that the reason her name is Jessica was because her mother was a fan of this movie, and so she named her daughter after the actress in this film, the actress that played Duan. Was her name Jessica Lang? Yeah, it was Jessica Lange. This was her first movie, actually. Yeah, yeah. And、uh, let's see, was this Jeff Bridges' Jeff Bridges' first film, or was it just like his first like big film?、Uh, he had done, from what I understand, he had done film before, but this was one of his bigger films. Right, right. That's、so、probably like he, his... he, he had not attained the level of the dude yet. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not the dude, man. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> the man, dude. <laughs> and I have a confession here. Yeah, I like this remake more than Peter Jackson's movie. There, I said it. <laughs> you monster! No, I'm just kidding. Actually, I'm not really sure what the public opinion is on Peter Jackson's film because people seem to flip flop back and forth. Although I think maybe the general consensus is that Peter Jackson's film was respect was it was a respectable attempt, but I guess overall not good. But I, we can talk about that when we get to Jackson's Kong. But as for the De,、uh, Dino De Laurentiis Kong, because it was very late in the game, I don't have the same the same level of nostalgia that other people do for this film. It's、uh, really nowhere near the same amount of nostalgia that my mother had. Like I forgot to mention, that my mother she loved、um, like gorillas and chimpanzees. Um, she finds that they over there were always her favorite animals because of this movie. She always loved the.、Uh, The character of Kong, the、uh, Kong's portrayal in this movie, and I really do so as well because unlike Thirty Three Kong, they really played up the sympathy factor for King Kong as we actually had a relationship between him and this film's character, this film's lead actress、uh, Duan. And uh, yeah, uh,、mm -hmm. um, I will say that I yeah that is true, and you could say well they did the same thing in O Five. O Five, you built up a relationship with sympathetic Kong and. Um, his relationship with Anne, but in here, in this film,、um, what was I going to say?、Um, 
uh, in here, they didn't make Kong like, oh, he's just simple. He's just it's Beauty and the Beast. In here, no, oh, no, Kong is <laughs> he is a mo- he is a wild animal, mm-hmm. um, and very much like you could see that there was some um, like again, there's pseudomation in here, which at the time it's like why pseudomation, um, but yeah, there was a big inspiration from Godzilla, and I feel like, and I'll, I'll go a little more into this, is that I feel like this was a major inspiration for 84. Hmm. It's possible because it does have somewhat of the same look and feel as, uh, I feel like 84 has a bit of the same look and feel, although I think as uh, Kong 76, but I feel like Godzilla 84 kind of skews more into like the horror aspect more so, especially with the yeah. music. Where yeah. uh, it's yeah, it feels like more like a horror, like a disa- a horror disaster film. Whereas Kong, it feels like more like a like that adventure film. Adventure, yeah, that's a summer blockbuster uh, action adventure film. And yeah. uh, I know a lot of people tend some a lot of people tend to complain about the suit, the quality of the suit, but I think it's actually pulled off really well. Now, for many years, I was against this design because I hated that the fact that this was a Kong that oh, was always walking on two legs because. Before, I always preferred to have a more realistic Kong, but um, especially after the Peter Jackson version, because that, for the longest time, that was one of my... I always preferred that film to any other version of Kong. But after, I think it was perhaps around the time of Godzilla 2014, and especially with the release of uh, Kong Skull Island, I, I think I, I started getting a more... Appreci- uh, having more appreciation for that, that man in suit, two-legged upright posture version of King Kong. And even 33, to an extent, often walked on two legs instead of four. Only when he was running did he ever walk on four legs. And so, yeah. uh, looking back at it now, I still think it's a bit of a problem to have Kong walk on two legs all the time because he's clearly meant to look like a realistic gorilla. And so, it feels a bit distracting to see a realistic gorilla, but walk while also walking on two legs. At least with Skull Island, they try to not make him look like a realistic gorilla. They try to make him his own thing, which was, in a way, sort of what Willis O'Brien was doing with Kong in the first place. Yeah. So, it's a little bit uh, distracting to see a realistic-looking gorilla, but just walking on two legs. Yeah, I will say that again. Like I said, Kong, you're meant to be feel sympathy for Kong more than 33, even. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they still show. Yeah, Kong will still kill you. Yeah, uh, my biggest disappointment was the fact that there were hardly any animals outside of one giant snake on Skull Island. I understand. Yeah, that's my problem too. Is that yeah, it was a budget thing, and um, but you, I would have liked to see more. Would you have liked to see someone something along the lines of a Gorosaurus showing up? I would have liked that or something like or maybe it, at like least the, or maybe, the, maybe the the dinosaur. Do you ever saw that Toho that to, that Tokusatsu movie, The Last Dinosaur? Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> Imagine if they just had those suits walking around for King Kong to beat up. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I will say that the human characters, even Jeff Bridges, you, you are forgettable. Uh-huh. Um, but that's how I feel like with every almost outside of. Um, Outside of really uh, Carl Denham, I feel um, I feel like I forget about all the human characters in these Kong movies. Mm, I see. Um, I generally like the cast of the. Um, actually, I really like the cast for Thirty Three, and I really enjoy the cast of of O Five. Um, but as for Seventy Six, yeah, there's not really a standout performance outside of like Jessica Lange and Jeff Bridges. And but I do say this was a very ambitious film for the time, and in a way there are certain moments that make it definitely worth be- seeing, especially the interactions between um, Duan and Kong. Those are probably the best moments in the film, and yeah. the level of work put into the suits, the suit acting, and the especially the animatronics with the life size arms is uh, ver- is a very huge technical achievement. The r- yeah. life size uh, robot comes, the- yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah. Be glad it's uh, those life size robot Kong scenes are, yeah, they're far away <laughs> for yeah. a reason. Even then, uh, if you saw this on like a very good quality DVD or even like I think it was like it's on Blu-ray in the UK, perhaps. Um, it does not look good at all. It doesn't even. It barely resembles the design of the suit itself. Yeah. 
Uh, because that apparently from now, th- I remember watching a documentary where apparently the robot Kong had been built first mm-hmm. because, uh, um, and the script was still in development, but the director said, oh, let's go Sudimation because he didn't like it. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, the creative team behind the robot said, dude, we spent fucking thousands of dollars on this. We're using it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Hence why we get the, the faraway shots. Right, right. It reminds me of that episode of uh, Futurama where Bender wanted everyone, wanted, he was on a planet, like an Egypt-like planet, and wanted everyone to build a giant statue of him that was constantly shouting, Remember me! And he was like, <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. Let's just start all over again. <laughs> exactly. Um, so that yeah. is... Uh-huh. Oh. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say that with um, Kong 70, there is a great emotional moment where, where Kong put sees the helicopters coming and he just puts Faye down mm-hmm. and she's just begging him to pick him back, uh, pick her back up. It's a heart wrenching moment when you first see it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the death scene is perhaps like it's very drawn out. So I feel like it's it, it really it's, tugs on the heartstrings. Because here's Kong and he understands it's like Kong understands that he's going to die. And in his mind, he thinks he's he's protecting Faye no matter what. And it's a more brutal scene than any of the other Kong death scenes in his in the films. Oh yeah, there's actually like blood involved, which I don't think we've really seen in any other movie. Maybe the thirty three had it, but because it was in black and white, it was never as gruesome as this. Yeah. Now, uh, uh yeah. I was just gonna say, like, I guess for recommendation, I'd say watch it. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'd say it's definitely, yeah, it's definitely worth a watch. Uh, But it is dated. I will say that it's dated because uh, what Kong climbs on isn't there anymore, sadly. Yeah, but you know what? It's like, it's one of those things where it's like, I remember this was back in the early 2000s where after the unfortunate, after the unfortunate disaster that was the the, the 9-11 terrorist attacks, the media was, or like, yeah, the media was very afraid to show any sort of semblance to the World Trade Center, going so far as to sometimes editing certain TV cuts of certain movies or TV shows, saying, like, we can no longer feature the Twin Towers in the background. We had to cut them out, even though these were movies that were clearly made before 2001. But I feel like enough time has passed for us to at least appreciate the the fact that the World Trade Center was there to begin with. I mean, sure, it's difficult to see the trade center nowadays, to see the World Trade Center and not think of 9-11. But at the same time, the, 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 the creation of those, of those two buildings, two, of the Twin Towers, was a technical achievement, a modern marvel for, uh, for, for you know, en- engineering and architecture. And so it's very nice to have a movie like this where we're able to in a way, like, appreciate, acknowledge the past and appreciate it for what it's worth. Yeah, and it does make sense, that, you know, at the time, because the uh, the World Trade Center was almost as, it was bigger than the Empire State Building more, right, right? Mm, yeah, yeah, it was. That's why they chose it. Yeah, so like, that's, like, the, just the next step at the time. <laughs> right, indeed. So, moving on. We have the rather infamous sequel to King Kong uh, to King Kong seventy six, that being King Kong Lives. Now, I do want to know. Uh, this is probably I don't. Would you say this is the most obscure Kong of the of the official Kong movies? Yeah, because I keep forgetting it. <laughs> yeah, I think possibly maybe this one. I think maybe King Kong Lives or King Kong Escapes because they're two movies that kind of go into very radically different directions. Like, this, as as different as King Kong vs. Godzilla was, it still kind of followed the same King Kong, uh, the original 33 King Kong template, as I went over with the whole uh, Islanders, and then Kong fights a monster, and then the humans bring the monster aboard after they intoxicated him. Here, just like with King Kong Escapes and going off into a weird sci-fi action-adventure di- uh, direction, um, King Kong escapes. They try to follow up the original film by having this very contrived scene of the humans bringing Kong back to life by means of an artificial heart. My Which probably is, would have caught. Yeah, yeah, why and how? I, 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 well, clearly they showed how, 
by featuring well, like gigantic scalpels and scissors and all sorts of surgical equipment and like bull like uh like factory machines. But well, here's the thing: that thing would have cost thousands of dollars, and plus, you also have to understand that how they keep Kong alive up until getting his heart. Yeah, and another thing: like, how did they? Why would you? Why are you will? Why first? Why would you want to save? Why do you want to save Kong? And second, why do you want to spend that much money? To, or who and is spending that much money on saving Kong? And why? Like I get that exactly. Like, I get that he's like a modern Marvel. He's like the last of his kind, and he's a uh, uh, a specimen that must be preserved. But after what he did to New York, who is willing to spend that much money to save him? Exactly. I mean, I don't want to sound callous here, but mm -hmm. the dude trashed New York, um, and the people responsible for him kind of were like, oh, uh, well, shit. <laughs> um, so, for me, it's like, they couldn't, you know, why spend this much money, and how did you keep him alive? <laughs> and... The whole story for this movie feels incredibly contrived where it's like, oh, we just so happen to have we just so happen to have the funds to bring him back to life. Oh, we just have so happen to have the technology to give him an artificial heart. Oh, there just so happens to be another Kong that we could use for a blood transfusion. Oh, he just so happens to have a failing heart when after he and his uh his new girlfriend, Queen Kong, is uh, is escaping. Oh, they just so happen to have conceived a child by the very end. It's like there's so many conveniences. It's constantly, like, scraping at the door, uh, to borrow a line from, from Nicolas Cage's Ghost Rider. It's constantly scraping the... the, the it's constant, the movie is constantly scraping at the door uh, and trying to burst down the door uh, when it comes to suspension of disbelief. It's constantly scraping at the chance to like burst uh, burst your suspension of disbelief wide open. And exactly. A lot of these, exactly. mm, and a lot of these plot points makes you makes you re constantly reminding you, yes, this is a cash in sequel. Yeah. But keep in mind, this is was this a sequel to the seventy? This is a yeah seventy six film. Yeah. This came out in eighty one. This came out in eighty one. Mm -hmm. So I'd say about a little over ten years, right? Oh no no no. Um, seventy six. So seven eight nine ten eleven. So only five years. So half a decade. Yeah, and that's uh, that, it's a little weird. But at the same time, it's like well, Aliens came out a, little, a lot later th after Alien. Uh huh. Yeah yeah. So this was during a time where Hollywood wasn't making sequels as fast as they are now, where it's like yeah. you have to make a sequel within two to three years. Yeah, and every film has to build up to a cinematic sequel. universe. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, with King Kong Lives, it's a forgettable movie. Yeah, not um, much happens. Like the only thing I really remember outside of the con con the uh, contrived plot was they try to have some bit of humor involving uh, King Kong fighting some rednecks and King Kong, like, flirting with with uh, his, with what I can only call Queen Kong, because I don't think they ever gave her a name, did they? I can't remember. Right. Um, so it's like they, they're, it's supposed to be, their interact, the interactions between the two gorillas are meant to be taken as comedic, and the characters themselves act a lot more humanistic. Outside of that, I can't really remember anything else about it. Like, I can't remember even a single human character's name for this movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is, out of all the Kong films, this is the most forgettable and probably the one I would not recommend. Mm -hmm. So, I, yeah, I would say this is probably the only Kong movie on our list to say skip it entirely because... You really don't need to see it, and I, I know there might be some people who like who might enjoy it ironically, but for me, I don't really find any entertainment value in this whatsoever. Yeah, same. Um, yeah, so I guess we skip ahead to two thousand five. Yeah, so let's check out the second att official attempt at remaking the classic Kong story from the ground up, this time it being a period piece rather than a modernized take. And uh, 
Oh yeah, actually, I didn't ask you before. How did you first come across Kong, King Kong Lives? Late night cable. Hmm. For me, I saw it very, uh, rather recently, like during high school on television. But yeah. at that point, also, I was already aware also, of the I, movie's existence. I wanted, to bring, I wanted to bring this up when we were talking about 76. Mm -hmm. um, when I had the cover, for, the VHS cover for King Kong vs. Godzilla, the weirdest thing was that it showed the 76 Kong face and the 84 Godzilla. Oh, I saw the, that one. Yeah, I seen that cover. I used to have it, and I was like, wow, and then I saw the film... <laughs> nine ten-year-old me is an idiot so i was thinking oh man this is gonna look cool man they look so different from the cover <laughs> yep that's mark that's like uh what do you call it uh deceiving vhs covers for you which they still do with dvds today yeah um anyway getting back to this film mm -hmm. i like this film but the more i watch it the more flaws i find and i understand that this is the film that really inspired peter jackson mm -hmm. um and this was his uh, his his tribute to it. Mm -hmm. And there is good in here. There is some good, but I feel like there's so many flaws, and the film drags on with it. Uh, this film just kind of drags, mm -hmm. especially it's. You could say that with a lot of Jackson films, but this it clearly drags. Like I can sit down and watch The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, you know, and yeah, they they la they last a while, but at the same time, it's like yeah, I can find stuff in here that make that I can sit through. Here, it's like, oh, fucking Christ. For me, it actually has the opposite effect. The more I watch this movie, the more I appreciate a lot of the little details. Um, I would agree that the movie does drag on, oh, drag on in several places. But for the overall, the most, for the most part, it doesn't really bother me all that much. And I think, like, I, I love the fact that, that Peter Jackson, because of how much he loves the original 33 Kong, he puts uh, as many... Easter eggs and references references in the film as much as possible. Uh, yeah, one time that is that is good. One those are. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I was, I was say, just saying those are good. Okay, and uh, one of my favorite lines early on in the movie was uh, uh, Carl Denham, portrayed by Jack Black, who will I I will admit felt a little miscasted, mis miscasted, kid. <laughs> miscasted. Yeah, and, he is a total miscast. Him and Adrian Brody as well. Uh -huh. They look a bit too modern for, for, for the 1930s. But uh, they look and feel and act a little bit too modern. But uh, especially, like, coming off of, like, what was it? I think it was the first movie he made, like, after School of Rock. So it's like, I can't see him without imagining him, like, ready to bust out his guitar and start, like, shredding some metal tunes while bashing giant bugs with his with his axe. <laughs> Yeah, um, um, but uh, oh, and yeah. he just mm -hmm. oh sorry you were uh, are you talking about the Fay Ray comment right where yeah, he's talking about yeah. the he wants to look for he wants to look for an actress for his movie he thinks Fay Ray but it's like oh no the people at ArcAO got her and he's like uh, what 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 it, he said like like Cooper so as <laughs> uh, as a reference to the director of the original Kong movie so it's almost like very metafictional right there where they start they start referencing the people who are making the Kong movie that he's about he's living in right now yeah um oh my god he's become self-aware <laughs> <laughs> but hey. you, I, you turn to like a uh, uh, bill and said whoa <laughs> excellent <laughs> actually no that yeah. I'm 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 confusing my characters between <laughs> bill and ted and and Wayne's World. So, uh, yeah, uh, anyway, with, sorry, uh, go ahead. I will say that Andy Serkis' performance as Kong is awesome, and hey, this was for, his... don't forget I, fucking Lumpy, man. Yeah, don't forget, yeah, don't forget Lumpy, but, um, this was obviously a great stepping stone for him to in his role as Caesar. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, he's just came off the... He just, is, it, I, I will say that Andy Serkis is our generation's Lon Chaney. I would probably say so too, in in terms of like a man who's able to portray so many very different um, characters and very like inhuman characters while still per having a sense of of humanity to them. Whereas Long Chaney, he portrayed, uh, and even Long Chaney Jr. Uh, both portrayed very uh, like monsters with personalities and human characteristics. I feel like he was. Um, uh, Andy Serkis was able to do so as well, though instead of makeup, he uses, uh, yeah, the the magic, the the wizardry of di digital mocap effects. Yeah, and this was right after he did Gollum, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, because Gollum, he first appeared 
did he first appear in the in the Fellowship of the Ring or the Two Towers? Um, Two Towers, but he did like little scenes here and there in Fellowship. Okay, so yeah, this Two Towers and Fellowship of the Ring, I believe they were two thousand one and two thousand two, respectively. So this was a good three years after Fellowship of the Ring. After he start a good three to four after- years after he started doing. Um, uh, Gollum. Gollum, yeah. Yeah, um, and it's, he, it, and, yeah, when he talked about interviews of how he did, basically, um, he did a lot, he, like, he would spend a lot of times at zoos watching, like, apes and chimpanzees act. He really, it really shows that he spent a lot of time facially, uh, just in his face, you can, he clearly gives a lot of emotion to call. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, I really like this version of King Kong. It's probably, like, for many years, my favorite design. Uh, like, and this was during my point where I always wanted to see a more realistic take on King Kong, and they really went all out by making him as close to a gorilla as possible, while also making him have a very distinct look. He's got a lot of scars on his um, body. He especially has that really cool scar around his uh, right eye. His jaw is slightly, like... A little bit broken. You can tell, like his, his jaw is like uneven, uneven, giving him like a nasty-looking snarl on the right side of his face where the scar is at. Um, yeah, the fangs are a lot more elongated. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, this is a version of King Kong where it's like this guy has like protected his title as as king for numerous years, and there's a lot of mystique to this version of Kong, as well as a lot of mystique to the history of this island as well. Um, I think in the commentary, in the director's commentary, Peter Jackson mentioned how there was possibly, uh, he made the, when he was designing, he and his team were designing this island, they made it look like there was another civilization that was here before the, uh, the inhabitants, the, uh, before the natives of Kong, uh, the modern day natives of, uh, arrived to arrived at the island and that and he also mentioned how just like son of kong the this island is also slowly sinking you can see the island is starting to deteriorate a little over time and i really liked how much detail he put into the world its monsters and its inhabitants as well yeah um i will say that again there are some scenes that you could have cut out kong on ice for one yeah and that the was extent useless. The extended... I wanted more time on Skull Island and less time on the damn boat. Mm-hmm, I see. Uh, did they extend the, the boat scenes, or was it only the Skull Island scenes for the extended cut? I th- I think there were some extended boat scenes, but there were a lot of Skull Island scenes that yeah, they cut out. that I appreciated. And it's also really neat to have, like, the more... Um, the less accurate portrayals of dinosaurs on display here with the excuse that these are the descendants of the dinosaurs from 65 million million years ago. So you can have a very nasty, scaly, crocodilian T-Rex, a.k.a. the V-Rex, or you can have the fat, um, bulb- fat um, uh, bulkiness of the brontosauruses as opposed to the apatosauruses, even though, in retrospective, the brontosauruses are now a legit species again. Fifth, um, with this is that evolutionary, it wouldn't make sense that um, they would evolve like this because genetically they would have to over that many centuries on that small island. Of course they would. Mm-hmm. And uh, they even ha- had like these raptors that kind of evolved into like mini T Rexes with like very large um, hands and uh, very large hands and and giant maws. So uh... yeah, which are also a total bitch to fight um, in. <laughs> in the game in the kong game oh yeah yeah i remember uh when i was in new uh, when i was in new york this year with my uh with bill and dylan we were playing a little bit of the king kong of the king kong j peter jackson's king kong the official game of the movie and they passed the controller to me to play the uh t-rex the v-rex level and i remember i was just like screaming like if i was pewdiepie like just running away from this t-rex while desperately <laughs> trying to shoot at it it's like oh god oh no oh why <laughs> Oh no! That would have made for an amazing let's play. We had the the proper recording technology. <laughs> yeah, I don't hate. Look, I don't hate this film, but it's not like something. It like if I need like something in the background, and there are some exciting moments. Obviously, the fucking V Rex fight. Oh yeah, yeah. 
Um, seeing that, because I saw this for, I think one of my birth, I can't remember, what, I think my 16th birthday with me and a lot of my friends, we went to go see this film. And we, like, that moment where Kong's fighting all three of the V-Rexes, when you see that on the big screen, you can't help but get a little hard. <laughs> I think at that point, everyone got a little hard inside. Yeah. So, <laughs> would you recommend this movie? I would. Mm-hmm. I have some problems with it, with the cast and the length, mm-hmm. but I still think it's a good film. Absolutely, I think so, too. And, yeah, this is definitely a solid movie you, everyone should see. Not as essential as 33. I think 33 is still, possibly, in my opinion, the best Kong film. But I feel like this is a close second, in my opinion. Yeah. In terms of overall quality. Now, people can might have... Uh, it's possible that people might have a different opinion as to what these characters... may uh, As to what is or is not a good character in... in or what is or is not a good movie, but in my opinion, I feel like this is the the best movie, the the best in terms of overall quality. Now we have a new Kong on the horizon, uh, a younger, a, young, a supposedly younger version of King Kong, still living on Skull Island in the seventies, fighting monsters that are supposedly that are the dubbed Skull Crawlers. And he's going to be in a movie starring uh, Dan from Roseanne, Loki, Nick Fury, and several other char- uh, character actors that we've known from other projects before. That movie yeah, two, be- of the- mm-hmm. <laughs> two of the actors are from straight out of Compton, and one of them is going to be Captain Marvel. Indeed. So this movie is, of course, Kong Skull Island, which as, as, as of the time of this recording, we've only had... The, we recently had the second trailer show up, which featured a lot of the plot, and it also featured, oh uh, yeah, one more character actor by the name of John C. Riley, which you may remember from certain comedies uh, like Walk Hard or Step Brothers or heck, even Wreck It Ralph. You know, the man has been in a lot of different movies, so I was very, I was, I was, I was pleasantly surprised to see his appearance in the movie. But uh, how? What are your overall thoughts on? Kong Skull Island, given everything that we've been we've seen now through both the trailers and the viral marketing. Well, I will say that I find it great. You know, a lot of people complained, oh, there wasn't a lot of Godzilla in the trailers. Legendary was like, oh, you want to see a lot of Kong? Here's your fucking Kong. Yeah, yeah. It feels like they really try to learn their lesson because I don't think like Legendary would be would be have to be absolutely stupid and ignorant if to not be aware of the main complaints a- that have been aimed at Godzilla 2014, that being the lack of focus on the title monster and the fact, yeah, the fact that, like, the story is not about Godzilla and the story does not feature Godzilla a lot. So I think it's a really good idea. It looks like they might be correcting that mistake with Kong Skull Island and not just kind of rehashing a lot of the themes and a lot of the style and themes of or the overall direction of Godzilla 2014. It uh, once again, it kind of has a very like adventure action adventure feel, kind of similar to King Kong, the Toho Kongs, uh, along with 33 Kong. Though I'm not sure how much. Maybe there might be a bit of more of that emotional resonance, given that Kong is supposedly the good guy in this movie, as he's fighting a bigger, more nastier threat with the Skull Crawlers, which, by the way, look a lot like the. Uh, the two-legged monsters, that two-legged lizard from Kong 33. Yeah, I, I noticed that as well. Um, but yeah, I do like how in this film, you know, very much like how in um, the 05 film, you know, life kind of found a way here. Mm-hmm. Um, we got giant spiders, we got giant lizards, we got a, even a giant fucking buffalo. Yes, uh, referred to as Swampy and- by my friend in Shoma. I will say that, you know, here's my theory, because since Godzilla and Kong are in the same universe, stay with me here, Andreas. Mm-hmm. I think Skull Island may become Monster Island in this universe. I don't see that idea as being that far-fetched. I mean, it's possible. Like, if, they're go- if you're going to make a cinematic universe out of these movies, it makes sense to make a monster, a mo- an island inhabited by monsters and making it Monster Island. Although it's kind of odd in a way kind of odd and also exciting to see two very popular islands from two major franchises mashed together as one single location 
Yeah, because if an ecosystem can can you know stay you know have a stable environment for all of these other giant creatures, it would make sense that you know if Monarch existed, it'd be like, yeah, we're gonna you know why not put more creatures on here if it can sustain this kind of life. Mm -hmm. And speaking of creatures, I really enjoy the um, I really like the new uh, Kong design. Uh, my complaint yeah. with 76 Kong was it tried to look realistic, but the two-legged um, po stance was very distracting and juxtaposed with the design. Here, they really went with a brand new original design, very similar to the 33 Kong, with some aspects of 76 and 05 thrown into the mix, giving it a... Well, so he doesn't look like a... Gor sim he doesn't simply... He doesn't look like a... He doesn't simply look like a gorilla on hind standing on his hind legs. Rather, he feels like a brand new, unique gorilla inspired creature that stand that just so happens to stand on two legs and i feel like yeah. that direction really worked and does he, feel a he, lot like kong facially he looks like 33 kong but uh, like the rest of his body he looks like a cool little fusion of toho and 33 kong uh-huh uh -huh. yeah yeah totally and if they're uh, gonna make and it makes good... sense that they would you know uh-huh obviously because you know having him walk upright and be as big as he is because uh Guess what? Who's he's fighting in twenty twenty? It kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah. If you're gonna have an upright character, it makes sense to have another character who's also in that similar position that allows him to like actually like, when he stands up, he's like at like this version of Kong seems to still be uh, in his younger age. So maybe this young Kong is gonna grow older over the next like thirty forty years. But uh, with it, it by standing upright, it helps him be able to have a similar height to Godzilla. Because if he was on all fours, he'd look a little shorter by comparison. Yeah, I still want Kong, I want Kong to get a little bigger, but not as big as Godzilla. I want like I want him to be like the underdog in the fight still, like how he was in the the original film. Mm -hmm. Although it's funny, like if that both movies are setting up these two monsters as dangerous characters who just so happen to be fighting more dangerous adversaries so in order for us to root for them both. So I wonder who yeah. are we supposed to root for for the next movie, um, for, for King Kong vs. Godzilla, because if both mo movies feature hero monsters, I wonder how they're going to approach a versus movie. Hopefully better than that other, super, uh, that other versus movie we've seen recently. True, yeah. Although, like, just like any other crossover movie, maybe they're just going to have them fight each other and then eventually f team up against a larger, more serious threat. So that you hey, can I, have... I, hey, I, I'd be all down for them fighting, like, legendary version of Gigan. Yeah, that'd be cool. I don't know, maybe not Gigan. I would want to see someone, like, stronger than that. Unless they portrayed a more, like, destroy a level of Gigan. So, any other thoughts you want us to ha you have you have on Skull Island before you wrap things up? Um, with Kong, I am looking forward to it. Um, it is like very clear that um, we have since we have more actors. You know, a lot of people are like, "Oh man, Brian Cranston, God's oh, he got killed. That's unfortunate." Uh -huh. With here, with this film, I will say that um, <clears throat> I will say that with this film. There's a ton of more actors in here that you can get behind. So if a few, I w I'm also kind of thinking um, along with Bill and Dylan on this is that I'm pretty sure Samuel Jackson's character is going to go AWOL and try to like he's going to be the Captain Ahab to Kong's white whale. <laughs> I'm tired of these motherfucking apes on this motherfucking island. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know what? Because of these are a lot of big name actors. I wonder if, like, may if the story is, like, really good, otherwise, maybe, like, the, the story is really good, otherwise, you, a lot of these actors probably would not have been, would, wouldn't have said no to this. Yeah, who knows? Um, with, um, with this movie, because now it is intertwined with Godzilla, there is, you know, I am really looking forward to this film. Kong looks great. Um, what I like also in this trailer that we don't get to see Kong fight any of the monsters. Because um, I think that, um, I think you should save that for the film. Right, right. Just give us a brief glimpse as to what he may or may not be fighting, and how he may be fighting. Yeah, yeah. Um, because he's not going to be like O uh, five Kong, where he's going to be moving around on all fours. He's going to be standing up and punching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Anything else I want to say is, I guess, yeah. The main thing is, don't do what Godzilla did. What Godzilla twenty fourteen did. 
show the monster, make the story about him. Don't take focus. A lot of people are are worried that the skull crawlers might be this movie's mutos, where they might steal the attention away from Kong, or steal the plot might be about the skull crawlers and not Kong. But the trailer uh, could be misleading, but I really hope that's not the case. So I hope the movie is about Kong and features Kong prominently. Yeah, I am too. With um, have Kong as the center focus, and you can have the skull crawlers in there and the other monsters, but the, it needs to be. This is Kong's film, not Skull Crawler Skull Island. Indeed. So, any last words on Kong as a series, Kong as a franchise, or Kong as a character? You know, it's it, it, you know, for a movie about a giant ape, you know, and much like with Godzilla. You know, it's it's shown that he's this character has stood the te- the test of time for longer than Godzilla, really. Oh yeah. Uh, and why do you think a character like King Kong has survived has been so prevalent for so long? I think um, he was he's the American kaiju. I mean, yeah, you could say, oh, what about Cloverfield? What about Cloverfield? <laughs> we had Kong first. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, that was our that was our first giant monster. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he's the one who started off, you know, without Kong, we wouldn't probably wouldn't have Godzilla. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was, you, well, um, Godzilla is, you know, the undisputed king of the monsters for, you know, good reason. Kong's the granddaddy of mm-hmm. the kaiju genre. He is, I don't, he, is you know, the, he is the gigantor of giant, of, mon, of, of he, as, he is what to giant monsters a gigantor is to, to giant robots. Exactly. Um, and I feel like, you know, there's so many ways... But the thing is that I'm hoping with Skull Island is that it tells a different story, you know. And obviously it will tell a different story than, you know, with how the other Kong films have kind of gone. Have kind of gone. Um, so, yeah, I actually am hoping for a Kong franchise. I think we're overdue for one. Mm-hmm. And hopefully and the, I think sequel that's, that's, uh, the sequel that is as good as the first movie this time around. Yeah, and to be in the same universe as Godzilla and Pacific Rim? All right. <laughs> well, that uh, last thing may or may not happen, well, but it's it's okay to have your hopes up. Well, but, I hear I keep hearing in and out things, so mm-hmm. who like let's see how Maelstrom does, then we'll see. Right. So I think the the reason of why Kong has survived for so long, yeah, he is the first one, but the reason why people still want to make new Kong movies or new movies that pay homage to the first movie. Maybe because it's a story that's so simple yet so unique. A story about man and bee, about man, Beauty and the Beast. A story about man finding, uh, exploring the unknown and finding something that's so wondrous yet so dangerous at the same time. Uh, uh, and I guess the original Kong movie had so many original ideas at the time that captured the imaginations of many young minds, or many young uh, minds throughout the years. And even to this day, those everyone at some point, everyone makes a reference to Kong. You know, like no matter how many movies there are, there are, in some way or another, they're always like refer- referencing the original Kong, um, giving the the store the classic story. Um, that much more relevance because it's so recognizable across numerous generations. So uh, I'm really in, in excited to see what direction it'll take this new version of King Kong and um, where they might go in this universe, in a universe where Kong may, pro- most likely will not die. Like, most versions of Kong has him die at the very end, at least like the, when it comes to the classic story. Here they're doing something original, which I'm very ex- excited about. And so... I can only imagine what they will do with the character in an ongoing uh, movie series that allows him to progress as a character. If that, Ex- yeah, if that is you know progress as a character, and you know hopefully um, again it's exciting to get the idea of a Kong franchise because only two films. <laughs> He's only had what two? Se- well, each movie's had one sequel each, but it's ever been a giant franchise. Yeah, outside so, of the Toho stuff, like probably the Toho stuff. Me, King Kong, it, uh, King Kong oh, Escapes is probably like, the only time they really went into King Kong Escapes and King Kong Lives were the two times that they went into like a wild direction that eschewed any semblance to the original plot of the first film. Hmm. 
So yeah, hopefully this movie will do better than that. So to wrap things up, where can people find you, Deadpoolzilla? On my channel. Anywhere else? No. All right, no more Steven Universe stuff? Oh, right. I keep forgetting I'm on that. Geekvolution. That's, that's a big as... channel, man. What have I told you about at, about self-promotion? I <laughs> forget. If, if, you know how not, many times... If you're, Steven... if you're not going to embrace social media, you have to at least do this, man. <laughs> All right. I'm on occasionally Geekvolution. Recently, I, as of this recording, I did a, another Steven, Us, uh, Steven Universe episode review with, um, with uh, Real Manos. And, yeah, there you go. What about you, uh, Andreas? Well, as usual, you can find me here on this channel. You can look forward to several of my upcoming reviews, as well as um, start, I'm planning on bringing back viewer requests, but in the form of a series of shorter um, videos that I can make up quickly and hopefully put out on a weekly basis to fill the gap between my larger, more elaborate reviews that my editor and I are working on with, like, the Rebirth of Mothra movies. Uh, my first viewer request had been a fan film that people have been requesting for quite some time ever since I did uh, Godzilla x the Kaiju Killer, and that being Godzilla Battle Royale. Um, outside of that, you can check out the latest episode of the Sons of Serizawa podcast, which you can find on Zazibar's channel, where we talk about all the recent news and entertainment that uh, came out um, during our seasonal hiatus. Finally, you can find me in, as of the time of this recording, um, it's not been uploaded yet, but it will be hopefully within the next two days. You can find me on D on D Man 1994. Uh, sorry, D Man 1954's channel um, as he and I go into a very large uh, spoiler analysis of Shin, uh, Shin Gojira, aka Shin Godzilla. Um, D Man six and uh, D Man 1954. He is a channel that focuses prim focused primarily on Shin Godzilla news, and so he's been getting a lot of ten attention within the kaiju YouTube kaiju community um, because he was always like the guy who's like the first on any sort of leaked news that comes out about the film. So um, it was really cool to uh, get the chance to talk to him and just discuss the film together after he made this very extensive, very elaborate fan cut of the entire movie using every single bit of leaked footage of the film out there. So uh, if you can find that the fan cut of Shin Godzilla, you can definitely do that. In fact, I'll probably ask him. I know you haven't seen the movie yet, uh, Deadpoolzilla, so I'm going to see if I can get that fan cut and I can send it your way. Oh, that'd be lovely. <laughs> so that has been our retrospective of the King Kong franchise. Hope you've enjoyed that. And so until next time, everybody, take care.